All right, today I put on my adventure hat because we're going on a bit of a review adventure. Today we're doing the first ever triple review on this channel with a look at the PNSO Carcharodontosaurus, Mapusaurus, and Meraxes. never held so many Carcharodontosaurids in my hands at once. Yes, but before we jump in and have a look at these guys, I wanted to say that this review was voted by my viewers over on my new Discord channel, so if you want a chance to vote for like future videos and stuff that I make, then go join my Discord channel. Link in the description. No! Alright, so we're gonna kick things off. <laughs> the way his face just hit my desk. Are you okay? All right, we're gonna kick things off with the first Carcharodontosaur that PNSO ever released, which is their Carcharodontosaurus, and I'm very late to the party with reviewing this one, but since I wanted to review the Mapusaurus and Meraxes anyway, since they're very recent releases, uh, I figured I'd shoehorn this guy in. This guy has a really cool silhouette. I love his silhouette. The detail is pretty good overall. Anatomically, it's also fine. Uh, the head shape isn't perfect based on most Carcharodontosaurus skulls that we have, um, but it's it it gets the job across. It, it it evokes Carcharodontosaurus to me when I when I look at it on the shelf. This one is incredibly photogenic for my figure photography that I do. It's so much fun to take pictures of. It's very versatile from a variety of different angles. But I will say where this one falls flat for me is the translation in the coloration with the paint quality versus the promo images we got. I thought the actual colors and patterns on the promo images for this one looked really really cool, and uh, they're still present. They just feel very dusty in a way and and the biggest thing is the patterns especially feel very airbrushed on and that continues into the face where we have this interesting masking like pattern around the mouth which you can see like right there it's very interesting and it's more obvious when you open the mouth and see like the black bordering the mouth my friend Aiden described this in a very humorous manner he said it looked like he was just uh, feasting on some oil <laughs> or something, and I totally see that, but I've grown to overlook it and it doesn't really bother me. But overall, that's the Carcharodontosaurus. I think this one is really nice and photogenic overall and one of the uh, more solid theropods from PNSO's earlier releases. So let's move on to the next one. And I'm gonna grab the biggest one out of these three, which is their Mapusaurus here. This one beats the other ones out by just about like an inch or two in uh, total tail length. And the head also, feels bigger compared to the others as well. Uh, one thing I'm gonna jump to immediately is the stand that this one comes with absolutely stinks. And I don't know if maybe I got the wrong stand or something, I don't think so because it seems to match the overall height of the figure, but with just the pose that it's in and the shaping of its chest, this needed like a, um, the actual stand needed like a new head on the top of it to actually nestle under the chest better because it likes to roll off the sides of it. And I actually, if you look on the on the bottom of its foot here, I put a little piece of Sculpey clay on its toe just to help it balance. So uh, as far as actually displaying these, this one is the most frustrating out of all of them. And another thing that's really funny is, look at this. I'm gonna put this near the camera if you can even see it. That is the back of this thing's tongue. The first few times I opened and closed the mouth on this finger, a piece of plastic just went flying out of its mouth like a bullet. And I was like, what in the world, what was that? And I picked it up and it's just the back of his tongue just broke off. It's the weirdest thing. Regardless of those complaints I have with this one, I think this one is absolutely stunning. I love the crouched, um, kind of chill crouched uh, walking pose that this one is in. It's different, but it just adds a little bit of different flavor to uh, the lineup compared to the other Carcharodontosaurs that they have. The detail on this one is just impeccable as well. I think it has gorgeous scalation detail across the entire thing, way better than the Carcharodontosaurus. I mean, just in general, PNSO's detailing has gotten so much better uh, since their earlier figures from this newer batch that they've been releasing. But I think the most standout part on this one is PNSO tends to not do incredibly exciting color schemes uh, across a lot of their figures. And this one, palette-wise, isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but I think in execution, its colors are genuinely beautiful. Like, this is a color pattern that I could see, like, the prehistoric planet team coming up with that just looks totally naturalistic, totally convincing, but is just really visually interesting enough to 
grab your eye when it's sitting on the shelf. I love the blotchy stripey pattern going down the tail, uh, the horizontal stripe like on the midsection that's kind of bordering the dark gray on the back of the animal. It's just a really cool peak way of using this color palette that they went for. I think it's really beautiful. Now one thing I didn't mention on the Cacarodontosaurus, but especially on these that are very recent, is they don't have lips. And uh, I personally prefer my dinosaurs with lips, and since that new study came out, there is even more reason to believe that theropod dinosaurs would have lips. And uh, I'm gonna go into a mini tangent here about this, because I was talking to my friend Eric about this fairly recently, and it seems like it should just be more of a default when you think about it to give dinosaurs lips than to not give them lips. Because literally most vertebrates today have lips to protect their teeth. I mean, even the argument for crocodilians where they say they don't need lips because they're in the water all the time and it hydrates their teeth or whatever. Uh, even animals like cetaceans who are fully aquatic have lips. It's a very interesting discussion point and just something that I thought I would bring up. Anyway, I know that PNSOs always leaned towards no lips on their figures, but I do hope that they move towards putting them on their theropods. Just seeing theropods with them is the norm for me and it looks more natural than, uh, than without them. But anyway, I digress. The Mapusaurus I think is visually stunning. I think it is a gorgeous figure, but just keep in mind with this one that it is a pain in the neck to display with the stand that they give you, at least with mine. And also, I don't know what was going on exactly with the, the back of the tongue just flying out of its mouth like a bullet. So, we'll see how consistent that is. If any of you guys own this one, let me know if that happened to yours. But last, but certainly not least, spoiler alert, here is my favorite out of this trio of Carcharodontosaurids that I have for PNSO, the Meraxes Gigas. I was expecting the Mapusaurus to be my favorite out of all of these figures, but this one completely blew me away when I got it- Shut up, phone. But this one completely blew me away when I got it in person. I was trying to prevent myself from getting this one because I am a simp for the Safari 2017 Giganotosaurus, and I thought that this one with its kind of similar in concept color would clash with that one on the shelf and detract from it. And I know that Giga is really old and outdated in so many ways, especially since the discovery of this thing, because this is a very recent discovery, Meraxes Giga. It's a very recently described uh, new genus of Carcharodontosaur. And it has changed our current understanding of uh, what we think like Giganotosaurus would have looked like, for example, with how fragmentary that animal was. If uh, you want to learn more about that, I totally recommend going to watch uh, Wydaw's breakdown of Giganotosaurus. Phone, shut up. I totally recommend watching uh, Wydaw's breakdown of Giganotosaurus. It's like an hour long, but it's in-depth. Everything you want to know about the animal. Such a great video. Uh, your dinosaurs are wrong. Go check them out. But anyways, I'm really happy I pulled the trigger and decided to get this one because uh, it doesn't detract from the Safari Giga. They just both feel like they have similar-ish vibes, but they're both going for their uh, their own thing at the same time. One thing that blew me away with this one with its coloration in person is not only when you compare it with the Carcharodontosaurus, not only are the patterns so much more beautifully uh, applied. Phone, for the love, I'm muting you right now. Be gone. You're done. Aha, uh -huh, you have no power here anymore. But one thing that surprised me about this one's coloration in hand that did not translate, at least for me, on the images and a few videos I saw of this one in person, is the subtle, like, almost... It gives the vibe of iridescence, but it's not actually shiny. But the way it's blended into the uh, the flanks on the animal, running all the way from, like, the chest down the base of the tail, there's a slight faded blue color that is really gorgeous in person. And there's also a slight faded pink color on the face. Just really subtle. Sorry, my memory card filled up. Anyways, it's just beautiful with this gorgeous striped patterning going across with these very subtle hints of vibrancy just naturally woven into the color scheme. Uh, it is really beautiful in person. Also, this one, unlike the Mapusaurus, and even though the Carcharodontosaurus is fine on its stand, this one especially works so well with its stand. The uh, stand nestles perfectly under its chest, it's the perfect height, and it's just... It, it works so well. It just looks great on display next to the other ones. Once again, the attention to detail is just great on this figure. Gorgeous scalation with different sized scales throughout the model. Especially love the ones on the face, like towards the end of the snout. I think they are really beautiful. And this one even includes the large inner toe that was more than double the length of the other claws on its feet. But yes, this one 
Really, really gorgeous, definitely recommend. And in case you're wondering how big these guys are, they are all just about 12 inches long, and I will put um, comparison shots of all of them next to each other up in the B-roll, so you can see them next to each other. But yes, that is my review of the PNSO Carcharodontosaurus Trio. I'm only missing the Giganotosaurus, but that one's expensive, so... I'm not getting that one right now. Let me know which one of these is your favorite. Thank you guys for voting for this review on my Discord. And yes, join my Discord if you want to vote for more videos down below. I'll catch you guys very soon in my next video. So take care and bye bye uh.